Welcome to NPTEL MOOC's course on Machine Learning and Deep Learning, Fundamentals and Applications. In my last class, I discussed the concept of Bayesian decision theory. How you can use the Bayes theorem for decision making. I discussed the concept of posterior probability. So, you can determine posterior probability, probability of omega j given x from the information. The information is likelihood information and the prior information. And in case of the Bayes law, that evidence has no role in classification. It is simply a scaling factor because it is same for all the classes. So, this term has no importance, the evidence. After this, I discuss the concept of probability of error. So, you can take a classification decision based on this parameter. The parameter is nothing but the probability of error. After this, I discuss the concept of loss. So, suppose x is a feature vector, x belongs to a particular class, suppose class is omega i. So, for this, I am taking a particular action. So, action is considered and corresponding to this action, I have determined the loss. And today, I will discuss from the loss how to actually determine the risks. With the help of this risks, I can take a classification decision. So, let us start this class. So, first I will discuss the concept of loss and after this I will discuss how to determine risks. So, in my last class, if you see what I have considered, suppose what is actually the risks. So, I have discussed this is the Bayes theorem probability of omega j given x that is the posterior probability and this probability of x given this omega j that is the likelihood and this is the prior probability and this is the evidence. So, already I told you that evidence has no role in classification. It is simply a normalizing factor. It is same for all the classes. So, in this example, I am considering only C number of classes. Now, let us consider this x, x is the feature vector. It may belongs to belongs to the class omega 1 or maybe it may belongs to the class omega 2. So, for class omega 1, I am taking some actions, some actions or decision is taken that is nothing but alpha i decision I am considering and corresponding to this the loss I can define like this lambda action alpha i is taken corresponding to the class omega j. So, what is the meaning of this? The loss means action alpha i I am taking for the class omega j. So, that I can consider as lambda i j. This is the loss. The loss is defined like this. So, in my last class I have also shown this example. Suppose I have this class omega 1, omega 2, omega k, k number of classes. These are the classes and I am taking some actions. So, action is suppose alpha naught, alpha 1, suppose this is alpha k dash, this action I am taking. So, for omega 1 I can take this action also alpha naught, for omega 1 I can also take this action alpha k dash. So, corresponding to this the loss will be lambda k dash 1, this is the loss. So, for a pattern classification, I can consider all this action. Suppose this action, if I consider as the reject option, reject. So, what is the meaning of reject? So, in the previous classes, I discussed the concept of the confusion matrix. So, if you see, this is the confusion matrix. So, these are the actual class levels, suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like this. And these are the predicted class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you can see in the confusion matrix, this is a confusion matrix. So, 
So, how many times 1 is recognized as 1? Suppose if I consider some value, suppose 20. And how many times 1 is recognized as 2? So, suppose 2 times. So, I can put this value. And similarly, how many times 2 is recognized as 2? Suppose it is 21 times. And how many times 2 is recognized as 1? Suppose 1 time. So, like this, I can determine the confusion matrix. This is a confusion matrix. So, I will be getting a diagonal matrix. So, from this, what are the parameters I can determine? One is suppose the accuracy rate I can determine, this accuracy percentage I can determine. Another one is the misclassification rate, misclassification rate, that also I can determine. So, how many times one is recognized as 2, 3, 4, 5 this? So, from this, I can determine the misclassification. How many times it is correctly recognized? From this, I can determine the accuracy percentage. How many times it is not correctly recognized? From this, I can determine the misclassification rate, the percentage I can determine. And also, suppose there is another parameter that rejection rate. Rejection rate. What is the rejection rate? Suppose in alphabet recognition, suppose A, B, C, D, I want to recognize A, B, C, D alphabet. Suppose I am giving the input something like this. So, this cannot be recognized. This is not A, this is not B, this is not C or this is not D. So, for this the classifier output should be reject. The classifier output should be reject corresponding to this input. Input is this. This is my input. So, corresponding to this input the output should be reject. So, that is why we are considering this option that reject option we are considering. So, how many times it is rejected? So, based on this I can determine the rejection rate, the rejection percentage I can also determine. So, from the confusion matrix you can determine accuracy percentage, misclassification percentage and rejection percentage. So, all this you can determine from the confusion matrix. So, come to this point. So, you can see the loss we can determine by this, the lambda ij. So, that means the action alpha i I am considering corresponding to the class, the class is omega j. So, now I have defined the loss. Now, let us define what is the conditional risk. So, in my next slide, I will explain what is the conditional risk. So, move to the next slide. The conditional risk I can determine r i. So, that is called the risk. That is risk r action is alpha i and this is taken for the Fisher vector, the Fisher vector is x. Action alpha i is considered for the Fisher vector, the Fisher vector is x. And we are considering c number of classes. So, j is equal to 1 to c, lambda i j, lambda i j is nothing but the loss and we are considering the probability that the true state of nature is omega j. This probability is nothing but it represents the probability that the true state of nature is omega j and that is called a risk. Now, from this you can determine total risk you can determine total risk for all x all the Fisher vectors. So, you can determine so total risk for all the Fisher vectors you can determine r is nothing but if I have to track the integration. So, you can determine the total risk like this. Now, we have to minimize risk. So, how to minimize risk? So, we have to minimize, we have to minimize, minimize risk, the risk is r. So, if this probability omega j given x is greater than probability of omega i, omega is a class, another class. For i is not equal to j, two classes we are considering omega j and omega i, decide the action alpha j. So, this action we are considering. So, this is the procedure. So, we have to minimize the risks. Now, here you can see we consider this is the conditional risk, the conditional risk is r i r 
x on alpha i is considered for the Fisher vector, the Fisher vector is x. This is nothing but the conditional risks, conditional risks. So, it is nothing but the sum total of all the losses, sum total of all the losses. So, that is nothing but z is equal to 1 to c lambda alpha i omega z probability of omega z given x. So, this already I have defined if you see sum total of all the losses that we have considered. So, this is nothing but z is equal to 1 to c lambda i j probability of omega j given x. So, already I have defined this one, this is actually nothing but the risks. Now, we have to minimize the risks. So, how to minimize the risks? We can show like this, how to minimize? Minimize risks r alpha i given x is r alpha z x for i is not equal to z for i is not equal to z. So, that means I have to minimize the risks. So, for minimization of the risks we are considering this for this we have to consider the action the action is alpha i we have to consider because the risks alpha i given x is less than risks alpha z given x. So, that means we have to consider the action alpha i. So, this is the definition of the loss and this is the definition of the risks. So, this we have considered. Now, let us move to one example. Suppose I have two classes. For two classes, how to determine the risks, how to take a classification decision. So, let us move to the next slide. So, let us consider a two class problem, two classes. So, class omega 1 and omega 2, two classes and we have considered the actions alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, corresponding to the class omega 1, I have lambda 2 1, this loss is lambda 2 1. If I consider the class omega 1, the action is suppose alpha 2 and corresponding to this you can see my loss is lambda 2 1 and corresponding to the class omega 2 if I take action is suppose alpha 1. So, corresponding to this the loss I can consider as lambda 1 2. So, that means I can take or I can consider these losses lambda 1 1 I can consider lambda 1 1 is nothing but alpha 1 given omega 1. So, action alpha 1 is considered for the class omega 1. And similarly, I can determine lambda 1 to lambda 2 1 and also lambda 2 2. So, all these losses I can determine. So, after determining these losses, I can determine the risks. So, how to determine the risks? R action alpha 1 is considered the given the x, x is the feature vector. So, this is lambda 1 1 probability of omega 1 given x plus lambda 1 2 probability of omega 2 x. So, I can consider the risks like this and also another risks I can determine that is for the action alpha 2. So, risks alpha 2 given x. So, it is lambda 2 1 probability of omega 1 x plus lambda 2 2 probability of omega 2 x. So, this risks also we can determine. Now, how to take a classification decision? So, decide omega 1 if the risks alpha 1 
x is less than rix alpha 2 x. So, already this concept I have discussed. So, based on the rix I can determine a particular class. So, we are considering the class omega 1. That is the meaning is lambda 2 1 minus lambda 1 1. So, from these two equations I can write like this lambda 2 1 minus lambda 1 1 probability of omega 1 x is greater than lambda 1 2 minus lambda 2 2 probability omega 2 x. Okay. So, this posterior probability we can write like this by the Bayes theorem. So, if I write like this what you can get you can see here lambda 2 1 minus lambda 1 1 probability x given omega 1 probability of omega 1 should be greater than lambda 1 2 minus lambda 2 2 probability of x omega 2 probability of omega 2. So, we can write like this. So, that means what we can consider? We can consider omega 1. So, this is considered if I select omega 1. So, that means the total condition I am considering for the class omega 1. Otherwise, I have to decide omega 2. So, in this expression also I can write like this. is greater than lambda 1 2 minus lambda 2 2 lambda 2 1 lambda 1 1. So, into probability of omega 2 probability of omega 1. So, this I am considering as a threshold okay? and also we assume that lambda 2 1 is greater than lambda 1 1 this condition we are considering. So, that means this part this we can consider as a threshold and this ratio I can consider as likelihood ratio likelihood ratio. So, this is the likelihood ratio I can write like L r. So, what is the decision rule? decision rule is if the likelihood ratio is greater than threshold then decide the class omega 1 otherwise the class is omega 2. So, this is the decision rule. So, in this case you can see what is the advantage of the likelihood ratio. So, advantage is this ratio is independent of x independent independent of the Fisher vector x. So, only we have to consider the likelihood. So, based on the likelihood ratio we can take a classification decision and this likelihood ratio that is independent of the Fisher vector x. So, here you can see how we can decide or how we can take a classification decision based on the likelihood ratio. Okay. So, based on this concept I am going to explain another concept that is called the minimum error rate classification. So, move to the next slide the minimum error rate classification. So, 
So, for minimum error rate classification, we are considering one function. That function is called 0 1 0 1 loss function. Which is defined like this lambda alpha i omega j. So, this is the expression for the loss action alpha i is considered for the class omega j. So, that is equal to 0 if i is equal to j and it is equal to 1 the loss is maximum if i is not equal to j and in this case we are considering the c number of classes c number of classes. So, in this case what is the meaning of alpha i? Alpha i is the action when the true state of the nature is omega i. I am repeating this alpha i is the action when the true state of the nature is omega i. So, for alpha i if the class is omega j decision is correct when i is equal to j. Otherwise, the decision is wrong if i is not equal to j. So, I can write like this for alpha i if the class If the class is omega j, the decision decision is correct when i is equal to j, and otherwise error if i is not equal to j. You can see here if i is not equal to j this loss function value is equal to 1. So, if alpha i we are considering and class is omega j the decision is correct when i is equal to j. Otherwise, decision is not correct if i is not equal to j. If i is not equal to j you can see the loss function value is equal to 1. So, how to define the risks now? Risks are action is alpha i given the feature vector is x. So, j is equal to 1 to c lambda alpha i omega j probability of omega j given x. So, which I can write like this j is not equal to i. If j is not equal to i then the loss function value is 1. So, this value will be 1. So, I can write like this probability of omega j given x. So, that means I can write like this 1 minus probability of omega i given x. I can write like this. So, to minimize error or to minimize risks, to minimize risks, select maximum. this probability. So, from this expression you can see if probability of omega i given x is maximum then the risk will be minimum. So, that means to minimize risk we have to select the maximum probability of omega i given x. If this probability is maximum then the risk will be minimum. So, decide omega i if probability of omega i given x is greater than probability of omega j given x for all i is not equal to j. So, this is the condition, this is the decision rule. So, we can take a decision based on this condition and this minimum error rate classification it is very important. So, for minimum error rate classification we have defined one function and that function is called 0 1 loss function. And based on 0 1 loss function I have determined the risks, this is the risks and you have seen how we can take a classification decision by considering this risks. 
So, this is about the minimum error rate classifications. Now, in my first class also, I discussed the concept of the discriminate function. So, in statistical machine learning or in statistical pattern classification, we considered this function, the discriminate function for taking a classification decision. So, in my next slide, I will explain what is the discriminate function. So, now the discriminant function. So, discriminate function is represented like this g i x and we are considering c number of classes. So, here you can see for c number of classes, I have c number of discriminate function. So, this x can be assigned to a particular class or x will be assigned to that particular class or to that class. So, x will be assigned to that class for which g i x is maximum. So, meaning is x will be assigned to that class for which g i x is maximum. So, here you can see for c number of classes, we have to determine c number of discriminate function and we have to find the largest or the maximum discriminate function out of c number of discriminate function and that corresponds to that particular class. So, the classifier is said to assign a Fisher vector x to a class omega i that means x is assigned to the class omega i if g i x that is the discriminate function is greater than g j x for all i is not equal to j. So, here you can see based on the discriminate function we can take a classification decision. For all c number of classes we have c number of discriminate function and we have to select the largest one. Okay. So, now because we have to select the largest one. So, this discriminate function I can write like this in terms of risks, this is nothing but the conditional risks. Already I told you this is a conditional risks. Conditional risks. So that means what is the meaning of this equation? The maximum discriminate function corresponds to minimum risks. So I can write this is a maximum discriminate function. is the maximum value of the discriminate function corresponds to minimum risks. So, you can see the maximum discriminate function that is the maximum value of the discriminate function corresponds to minimum risks that minimum risks corresponds to maximum posterior probability the probability of omega i given x. So, that means I can write this maximum discriminate function discriminant function corresponds to corresponds to maximum posterior probability maximum maximum posterior density so maximum discriminate function corresponds to maximum posterior density so you can see this i can write in this from probability of x given omega i probability of omega i probability of x by using the base law I can write like this. So, g i x I can write like this because the evidence we are not considering.
I can write like this. So, g i x is nothing but the multiplication of the likelihood and the prior. So, move to the next slide. So, g i x we have determined like this g i x is the discriminant function probability of x omega i probability of omega i. So, now we can take the necessary logarithm about the size and one thing is important the scaling of g i x does not sense the decision making because decision is taken with the help of the discriminant function. So, scaling will not affect this one. Now, if I take the logarithm in this equation the both the sides. So, what I will be getting g i x that is the discriminant function and based on this discriminant function I am taking the classification decision. So, this is the expression for the discriminant function based on this discriminant function how you can take a classification decision. Suppose I have a Fisher vector the d dimensional Fisher vector I can write like this the Fisher vector is x and is a d dimensional Fisher vector. Now, corresponding to this Fisher vector how to take a classification decision. So, these are the components of the Fisher vector x 2 x 3 and x d the d dimensional Fisher vector. And already I told you for c number of classes I have c number of discriminant functions. So, this is z 1 x z 2 x and this is z c x c number of discriminant function. And you can see I am just giving the inputs from the Fisher vector. Similarly, for z 2 x also I am giving the information that means I am giving the input the input is nothing but the Fisher vector and similarly for z c also I am giving the input. After this we have to find the largest discriminant function. So, what I can consider we can determine the cost. So, which one is the largest we have to determine and based on this we have to take classification decision classification action classification action we have to take based on this. So, you can see how we can decide based on the discriminant function. So, the meaning of the discriminant function is we have to divide the Fisher space into C regions. So, that means we have to divide the Fisher space we are dividing the Fisher space into C decision regions. These regions are like this R 1, R 2. So, R C because I have C number of classes. So, how to take a classification decision? If Z i x is greater than Z j x for all i is not equal to j, then x this vector is in the region, the region is r i. So, the meaning is x is assigned to the class, the class is omega i, the x is assigned to the class omega i. And what is the equation of the decision boundary? The equation of the decision boundary is z i x is equal to z j x this is the equation of the decision boundary. So, here you can see the how we have taken the decision with the help of the discriminant function. Now, let us consider two classification problem. So, move to the next slide. Suppose, let us consider two classes.
z 1 x and z 2 x. So, I have two discriminate function one is z 1 x another one is z 2 x. So, corresponding to this I have two regions what are the regions? Regions in the Fisher space one is r 1 and another one is r 2. So, if z 1 x is greater than z 2 x then what I have to consider then x should be assigned to the class the class is omega 1. Otherwise, we have to consider otherwise x should be assigned to the class omega 2. And what is the equation of the decision boundary? The equation of the decision boundary is z 1 x is equal to z 2 x. This is the equation of the decision boundary. So, that means this equation I can write like this z 1 x minus z 2 x is equal to 0. So, that means I can simply write like this z x is equal to 0. So, this is nothing but equation of the curve equation of a curve z x is equal to 0 equation of a curve or maybe a straight line or maybe a circle or maybe a curve. So, what is the nature of the decision boundary will be discussed in the next classes. Now, for the time being you can see this is the equation of a curve. So, it may be linear decision boundary maybe I can consider a straight line or I may consider a plane like this we can consider. So, how to show the decision boundary? So, this is the Fisher space and I have two regions region R 1 and region R 2. Region R 1 corresponds to the class omega 1 and region R 2 corresponds to the class omega 2. So, if z x is greater than 0 then I have to consider the class omega 1 and if the z x is less than 0 I have to consider the region R 2 and that corresponds to the class omega 2 and this is the decision boundary. So, it is a straight line. So, z x is equal to 0. This is the equation of the decision boundary. So, for a 2 D vector it is nothing but the equation of a plane. Okay. So, you can see this is the decision boundary the equation of the decision boundary z x is equal to 0. So, this z x already I have shown that z x is nothing but z 1 x minus z 2 x that I can write like this l n x omega 1 probability of x omega 2 plus l n probability of omega 1 probability of omega 2. So, this is a very important equation for two classes we have shown and that is the discriminate function g x is equal to g 1 x minus g 2 x which can be written like this. So, that is g x you can write like this again I am writing this equation l n probability of x omega 1 probability of x omega 2 plus l n probability of omega 1 and probability of omega 2. So, this is the discriminate function for two classes. So, up till now I have discussed uh, this concept one is the concept of the loss and from the loss I have discussed the concept of the risks and with the help of the risks we can take a classification decision. So, what is the summary of today's class? The summary of the today's class is so first we consider the risks the risk minimization framework. So, we are considering c number of classes. So, briefly I am explaining here because already I have explained and for these classes I am considering some of the possible actions alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha a these actions we have considered and based on this we have defined the loss. The loss is lambda alpha i given omega j. So, that loss we have considered. After this we have considered 
what is the expected loss that is the equation for the expected loss that is nothing but the conditional risk. So, this is the conditional risk the conditional risk you can determine like this and this is the expected loss the conditional risk you can determine by considering this equation and if I consider all the Fisher vectors for all x. So, the total risk you can determine by considering this equation. So, already I have explained this one. After this how to take a classification decision. So, if I consider two class problem two category classification we can consider the x on alpha 1 or maybe we can consider alpha 2 alpha 1 corresponding to the class omega 1 if I decide omega 1 alpha 2 if I decide the class omega 2 and based on this I can determine the loss and after this I can determine the conditional risk because I have four losses lambda 1 1 lambda 1 2 lambda 2 1 and lambda 2 2 already I have defined. So, I can determine the conditional risk after determine the conditional risk what is the decision rule if r alpha 1 given x is less than r alpha 2 given x then we have to consider the action alpha 1 and what is the meaning of this we have to consider or we have to decide the class omega 1 otherwise we have to consider the class omega 2. So, this is equivalent to decide the class omega 1 if this particular condition is satisfied. So, this already I have explained. So, based on this condition I can decide a particular class. This is the concept of the risk minimization and after this we considered this ratio that is nothing but the likelihood ratio. So, based on this likelihood ratio also you can take a classification decision. So, if this probability of x given omega 1 divided by probability of x given omega 2 that is the likelihood ratio is greater than this value this is the value then I have to consider the action alpha 1 that means I have to decide the class omega 1 otherwise I have to consider the action alpha 2 and that corresponds to the selection of the class omega 2. So, this is the loss we have considered and this we are defining as a threshold the threshold I have already discussed. So, we can decide a particular class if this ratio the likelihood ratio is greater than this threshold the threshold is theta lambda. So, if the likelihood ratio exceeds a threshold value independent of the input pattern x we can take optimal actions this is the summary of this. So, based on the likelihood ratio that is actually the independent of the pattern x then uh, based on this likelihood ratio we can take a classification decision. After this the most important topic is the 0 1 loss function. So, we have defined the 0 1 loss function and in this case alpha i action is taken if the true state of the nature is omega j the decision is correct if i is equal to j otherwise it is error if i is not equal to j. So, corresponding to this condition this is the 0 1 loss function lambda alpha i given omega j that we have considered and it is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j and it is equal to 1 if i is not equal to j and based on this we have determined the conditional risk and here you can see we have to maximize this to minimize the risk. If the probability of omega i given x is maximum then the risk will be minimum. So, this is the concept of the 0 1 loss function. So, minimize the risk requires the maximizing the probability the probability of omega i given x we have to maximize. For minimum error rate decide omega 1 if the probability of omega i given x is greater than probability of omega j given x for i is not equal to j. So, this is the decision rule. So, this is the concept of 0 1 loss function after this I discuss the concept of the discriminate function. So, g i x is the discriminate function and for c number of classes I have c number of discriminate function and we can take a classification decision the decision is x is assigned to the class omega i if g i x is greater than g j x for i is not equal to j. So, based on the discriminate function I can decide. So, this concept also I have explained and after this discriminate function because we have to find the largest discriminate function out of c number of discriminate function. So, maximum discriminate function 
corresponds to minimum risks and also I can write the maximum discriminate function corresponds to maximum posterior probability. So, g i x is equal to probability of omega i given x. So, this g i x can be written like this g i x is equal to probability of x given omega i into probability of omega i that is from the base law and after this I can take the natural logarithm both side and I will be getting this the expression for the discriminate function. So, already I told you the discriminate function do not change the decision when scaled by some positive constant k. The decision is not affected when a constant is added to all the discriminate function. So, this already I have explained. So, Fisher space now it is divided into C decision regions. So, I have C number of decision regions R1, R2, R3, Rc and how to take a decision rule if g i x is greater than g j x if i is not equal to j then the Fisher vector x will be in the region r i r i means x should be assigned to the class the class is omega i for two class case the same principle we can extend and the classifier is called dichotomizer that has two discriminate function one is the g 1 another one is g 2. So, g x we can write like this and decide omega 1 if g x is greater than 0 otherwise we have to consider omega 2. So, what is the dichotomizer? Dichotomizer is g i x is equal to l n probability of x given omega i plus l n probability of omega i. So, we are considering the natural logarithm. After this we can determine g x and with the help of the Bayes theorem we can write the g x in this form. So, this is the expression for the g x. So, up till now we have discussed about this. So, for taking a decision classification decision we can consider the discriminate function and based on the discriminate function I can take a classification decision. Up till now I discussed the concept of the risks. So, from the loss how I can determine the risks. After this I discussed the concept of 0 1 loss function. So, with the help of 0 1 loss function I can take a classification decision. After this I discuss the concept of discriminate function. For C number of classes I have C number of discriminate function. So, with the help of this discriminate function I can take a classification decision. In my next class I will continue these concepts and mainly I will consider some of the other concepts like what is the expression for the discriminate function for the normal density Gaussian density. So, all these concepts I will be explaining in my next classes. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.